This is the walking talking mock for 3.1.2 which is just focusing on efficiency of algorithms. Now this is a typical question that might come up to do with efficiency. We've got here two different algorithms for the same problem. Our question there is which algorithm do you consider to be the best solution to the problem and it says justify your choice. So we want to make sure that we are having a really good look at these two different algorithms so that we can figure out which one might be more efficient. Now just by looking at the lines of code that have been used there, they've both got nine lines of code so that's not really giving me any clues at all. So a trace table here can be very useful in finding out whether it's efficient or not and having a look at how those variables, how those loops are actually working, how many iterations need to take place before a solution is found. So you've got here the completed trace tables for algorithm one and algorithm two are shown below when the array is clean, diffy, nor, carp, and hopper. And it does say on the exam paper that indexing begins at one. So we know that this here is at location one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So it says, which algorithm do you consider? So which algorithm do you consider to be the best solution to the problem? And then we've got another one of those command words there, which is justify. So that means, so justify your choice, give a reason. And we've got two marks, so I would imagine I'm gonna get a mark for a successful option choice, and then another mark for giving a valid reason to go along with it. So moving over to here then, let's have a look at these trace tables and see how they're actually working. So we've got two variables on our trace tables and what trace tables do is they just see what values are going to be in the variables at different stages in our code. So we've got here matched and matched is there. The first time we see matched it's got false stored inside it so that's what it says false there. I the first time we see I, it's got a zero in there. So that is what he's written there. Exactly the same thing has happened over this side. If you look, we've got matched, it's false, I is zero. Then it starts to actually change. This is where you see the differences between the two algorithms. So the next time we see I, we have added one to it. So it becomes one. Now, this is where it's going to start looking at the contents, this list item here. So we've got here, if array i, so it's going to look at the first location is equal to a, and a is diffy, um, then match it as true. Now it's not, so it would stay false. Now you can write false on the trace table there as well if you want to or you can just keep it blank because it hasn't changed so one has been changed so then it's going to look at the next one so the next iteration one is added so now it becomes two and because diffy is stored in location two this now changes to be true so we found diffy at location two. Now the way this while loop works is that it will iterate through i from one, two, three, four, five. So it has to go all the way through before the loop ends. So this means that there's a bit of wasted time here because we didn't, we found the match, so we didn't need to look at the rest of the array there. If we move along to algorithm two, we've already looked at those first little bits, but then we go to the next one. This loop is different because it's saying while i is less than five and matched is false. So while that condition is true, run this line of code. So as soon as matched becomes true, the loop breaks. And we can see this happening here. So true to that is now set to true, so this whole condition becomes false and it comes out of it. So we haven't got that wasted time of looking at 
the other three items in the array. So that can help us give, our, give us our answer now. So it says, which algorithm do you consider to be the best solution to the problem? So I'm going to say algorithm two is the best because so I've got my first mark because I've made a good choice here and then we've got that justify your choice so we're giving a reason so that's why I've got to add this because so I don't just put the number two here I'm actually putting my reason as well so it says because the algorithm stops so or the loop stops when a match is found. Okay, so that is a valid reason. So I've got my answer and I've got my reason. So that should be giving me two marks in the exam. The next question is a multiple choice question and here we're using these lozenges down here which might be something that you're not actually familiar with. Um, on the front of the exam paper which you won't have seen on the mock exam it says some questions will require you to shade a lozenge if you make a mistake cross through the incorrect answer so like that so if I was gonna do this one for example and for some reason I decided oh actually that's wrong I then cross it out like that and I shade in the correct one so you've got to be really careful with these because these questions are nearly always marked by a computer so you've got to make sure that you are doing exactly the right thing or else it's going to pick it up wrong so you don't want to go through all the effort of working the answer out getting it right and then you fill in this section wrong so do be careful with that section there so we're just gonna get rid of that because I don't want that to answer the question and then I'm going to get my pen back okay so the algorithm in figure 4 is a binary search algorithm designed to search for a value within an array so this is figure 4 it says line numbers are included but are not part of the algorithm for this algorithm array indexing starts at 1 so we know that that is a 1 it says there are alternative statements that could have been used on line 5 of the algorithm shown in figure 4. So line 5 is this one here. It says that would not change the functionality of the algorithm. So we don't want to change what it's doing. Shade one lodgings to show which of the following lines could not replace line 5 in figure four as it would change the functionality of the algorithm so we've got to make sure that we're reading our question correctly so we've got a not there it says shade one lozenge to show which of the following lines could not replace line five in figure four as it would change the functionality of the algorithm so let's just take a quick walk through then so we've got a while left is less than right so would this work so we've got here while left is not equal to right and then we've got instead we've got while left is less than right so left is storing the integer one right is storing the length of the array so the length of the array is one two three four five six so we've got here the left is one and then we've got six because there's six items in the array so we're saying while one is less than six in that first iteration and then it changes so the second time it will be two then it'll be three then it'll be four then it'll be five and then the loop will break so we're saying here while left isn't equal to right run this loop and then exactly the same thing will happen if that line of code is used because it will get all the way to six and when six is in there that will no longer be true so the loop will break so we can safely say that that one works then we've got 
while not left equal right. So again, we've got here left not equal to right. That's what that means. And then we're just saying here, while the statement is not left equals right. So we've got here, a, this is a very, very similar command there. So left is right, which is pretty much what is there. So when it gets to six equals six, the loop will break. So it'll run through the loop. The loop will break when it gets to six equals six because then this statement becomes false. So again, that wouldn't change the functionality of the algorithm. And then if we look at this third one, while left is less than right and left is more than right. Okay, so what is happening here? So what for that to be true, we're saying while left is less than right, so we know that left is less than right would be one is less than six the first time because we've already worked it out there. And then we're saying left and left is more than right. Okay, so have a look at that. How can that statement be true? Just in this first iteration of the loop, how could that ever be true? So one is less than six, that's true. And one is more than false. One is more than six, that's false, isn't it? So that can't possibly be ever true. So I can safely say, that this is going to be my correct answer because it's impossible. Whereas if I go to this one, I've got or. Okay, so or would work in that situation because we only need one of these to be true for the iteration to continue. So that is our correct answer there. Our final question is to describe an efficient algorithm. So again, we've got one of our key words there, our command words that appear in exams, and it is describe. So describe means tell me what it looks like. So describe an efficient algorithm. So we're looking for efficient, obviously we know what algorithm means, and it's worth two marks. So I'm probably gonna have to make two points in my answer to get the full two marks. So I'm describing an efficient algorithm. Now, this is of much debate really, but the general consensus is that an algorithm is efficient when it uses a minimal amount of steps and a minimal amount of resources to run resources is the main thing that we're looking for here but it can vary so an algorithm is efficient when it uses the least amount of steps and minimal resources to run. So just thinking about those two algorithms that we were looking at previously, they both had exactly the same amount of steps in terms of their individual lines of code. But when it's actually running, when we're thinking about the resources and the amount of lines of code that will actually run while it's working, the one on the right, the second algorithm, uses used the least resources because it only needed to iterate three times where the other one iterated five times. So it used more resources. So an algorithm is efficient when it uses the least amount of steps and minimal resources to run.